Hey, welcome to my journey. Well, well, well. <sighs> yes, it's our weigh-in. And Mama not happy. Although... Upon reflection <laughs> this morning, <clears throat> I know what it is. Still don't make me happy. <clears throat> I weighed 265.8 for a gain of 5.2. And that puts me way down at 111.2. I couldn't figure out why I gained because I did not have a bad week. I really didn't. Now, granted, I didn't track every single day, um, every single meal. But my eating was not that bad. I couldn't pin it down until. And this ain't an excuse. This is just how it happens. I had come off Lyrica. Because I thought, oh, my knees are um, done. So maybe it'll help my legs and whatnot. Well, I come off of it couple weeks ago and last week I didn't have any this week I didn't have any and that's when it hit me I no last week I didn't have any this week I went back on it let me get it straight that's when it dawned on me I went back on the Lyrica and that has to be the gain because Lyrica is notorious for causing weight gain. And that's what she's, you know, told me before. It was my choice. Did I want to deal with the weight gain or not? She said, it's your choice. And so I was feeling so bad. Physically, my body was just, it felt like a thousand pounds just dragging me down, aching the whole nine yards. When I got back on my Lyrica, I perked up. I was like a dry sponge that got water, and I perked back up. I don't know if that is common, if Lyrica helps your whole body, but it does mine. Because every single time I've tried to come off of it, I'm thinking, okay, I can do it. Well, I can't. So I still have some neuropathy in my feet, mostly my left one, but it's not as bad as it was. And the leg pain's pretty good, but the whole rest of me was just, I, I told David, I said, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is. I can't, I can't figure out what it is. And I'm telling you, I feel so much better. I feel like doing something. Listen, me and RJ walked two times this week. We walked Monday and we walked yesterday. We didn't walk Tuesday because it was cold. Oh, it was cold. I said, I ain't getting out there in that. Well, yesterday was so, it was so windy. We were walking around a loop. And when we were walking this way, the wind was blowing in front of us. And so we, we were walking in resistance. It was blowing so hard. We were walking in resistance. Like I told RJ, I said, it's like being in a pool in water, how you have that. He said, resistance. I said, yes, resistance. So we we got around around this way, and then we kind of didn't feel it. Then we got back around. I think it might have been because of the ball field in that big tall building that might have had something to do with it. And then we got back around to head back this way, and it was coming from behind us. And I mean, it was smacking us. Well, I was going to pull my hood up because it was blowing my hair all like this. <laughs> I didn't want to walk around looking like oh, Hank. So I put my hood up on my hood, my jacket. And the hood's bigger than my head. Well, I thought maybe I could just let it rest right here. The whole thing blew forward and it's just going <laughs> all over my face. So I had to take it down because I couldn't see to walk. <laughs> well, we were walking back to the car. That wind was so strong, it knocked me off my balance and I had to grab on to RJ. I told him, I said, when the wind can knock me off my balance, that's some wind. <laughs> but we did it. We did it. So, I guess we'll go back and try again today. 
he had told me, I had told him before, I said, now, when, when I start walking back again, I said, I'll come get you. So he messaged me. He said, remember how you said you'd come get me to walk? He said, well, when it warms up, well, it was good, nice that day. So it was one day last week. And uh, so we went that day. And like I told him, I don't exercise on the weekends. So then we went Monday and two cold Tuesday and went Wednesday. And so I'm assuming we'll go today. But that is what I am attributing that weight gain to, is going back on that Lyrica. The initial back on it, here you go, here's your reward. <laughs> here's your reward. But I ain't happy about it. I ain't a lick happy about it. I, I, I scrolled down through my um, weight and I had got down to 243. That's the lowest I had got down to. And then surgery, which I am not rolling my eyes at the surgery because I wouldn't take a dollar and a quarter for it. You hear what I'm telling you? Love these knees. But I hate that I gained that weight. And then I was starting to lose a little chipping at it. And then here this happens. So it's rather discouraging. We, we say you don't define yourself in the scale, but like we've talked about before, when you're on a journey to lose weight, you kind of need the scale to gauge your progress. I mean, you can tell if your clothes fit or whatever like that, but I'm saying if, if you're trying to go to a number, then you need a number to guide you, let you know how you're doing to get towards that number. Otherwise, don't even bring it up. Don't bring up uh, goal weight. If, if you don't have a goal weight, then you don't need to look at the scales. But if you have a goal weight, you need to look at the scales. Hold on, I got to cough this dry throat. Okay, I was sitting here talking and getting all dry and tickly. But, so yeah, I'm not happy with the scales. But there's, there ain't a thing I can do about it except for do better next week. And hopefully that initial game will be all I, I mean I fought it for years I, I'm i guessing that's one of the reasons why I've been so slow because I've been on Lyrica for years and it causes weight gain that's not an excuse that's a, a scientific fact <laughs> but the opposite of weight gain the, the benefits outweigh the weight gain uh, they just do. They just do. So, anyway. Hold on just a minute. So, let's quit talking about that. The more I talk about it, the more irritated I get. So, today at 1, there's going to be a collab between Denise over at Dish with D and myself. It is... Oh, that's today! Leap day! It's leap day for our leap year. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It is a leap into savings with a Dollar Tree dinner collab. She asked me, did I want to do it? She knows I like to do the Dollar Tree dinners, and she thought it would be fun. I thought it would be fun, too. Excuse me. So that's at 1 o'clock today. Be sure to tune in to me and Denise. The, when I went to do my shopping to try to figure, I didn't know what I was going to make. I just had to go and see what was available. You, you can't plan a meal and go to Dollar Tree to buy the ingredients because you're not guaranteed that they're going to be there or that they're even going to carry them. So I went up to Salisbury because that's the bigger DT and they have a better selection of food. <clears throat> so I went up there and I was just standing around looking and <laughs> thinking and it hit me what I was going to make, and so then I started putting stuff in the buggy because I'm like, well, I'm here, let me get the groceries, and I'm going to start up my Dollar Tree dinner um, series again. You know, I quit before I got my knees done, and then I never got back to it, so now that I'm doing better, I'm going to start that series back up because um, a lot of you liked it, and I've got to get my inventory so I can start putting meals together. I was putting some together in my mind at the store. But, you know, I never forgot. So I'll take my notebook in there. I'll take all my food out of the box. I'll write down what I have. What I have in the freezer. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Hold on. Boy, I got it this morning. What I have in the refrigerator. And then come back here and sit down and start putting meals together. So I'm excited about that. RJ is too because he likes getting a, a free meal or two. Because <laughs> I was doing like two or three at a time because Dollar Tree dinner, since it's like prepackaged everything, you know, there's no like fresh anything. It's a box, a bottle, a jar, a can. They come together quickly. So now the collab took longer because of one special ingredient. I'm gonna make you tune in to see what that was. Uh, isn't that me to me? Uh, anyway, so I'm excited about that. But I was gonna say I don't have much to talk about. But the, Holly and the baby can't. I still call him the baby. He's over two years old, and uh, they come up. Whatever day that was. Might have been Tuesday. I think it was. <clears throat> it was. That was the cold day. He has the most pitiful. Because he has the sweetest face. And when he gets sad. Or his feelings hurt. His lip quivers. and his, He's got those big brown eyes anyway. And then his eyes get big. And they get tears in them. He's so. Beautiful. Well, he loves outside. He's going to be a little country boy through and through. He loves outside and he loves playing in the rain. Holly lets him play in the rain and he loves it. Well, they came over and she couldn't get him in the house. And so she had to pick him up and bring him in. And he leaned up on her on the couch and he, she said, no, we can't go outside and play. It's, it's, too, it's raining and it's too cold. He was looking, he was outside. And I looked over at him. I said, come on. <laughs> I'll take you outside. I couldn't take it. Momo couldn't take it. So I went out there. <clears throat> I popped my head back in the door. And Holly said, you better get a coat. I'm like, yes, that's what I'm coming in here for. Well, it, the misting had stopped. It wasn't raining. It was like misty sprinkling, you know. So she pulled his little hood up. Then he went out there. What he likes to do outside at my house is play with Papa's car. He goes from door to door to door, opening it. He'll get in. He'll drive a little bit. He'll get out and shut the door. Then he, he had a rock he, he found up here in my pot on my porch. Oh, he found the rock. And so he carried the rock around for a long time. He carried that rock around. He would open the back seat and put the rock on the seat and then shut the door. And then he'd go around to the passenger side, open it up shut the door, and then he'd come back around, get back in the driver's side, play up there a little bit, then he'd get out and go to the back door. He did some, he's got an imagination that is just, it's crazy how much imagination this little child has. And he picked out something, and then he turned around, and he, he ate it. He said, what, whatever in his mind he was playing, he was playing it, I'm going to tell you. She sent me a video of him the other day. He was talking and carrying on and lifting up his little, um, car thing that they push him in and looking down and then he got a stick and he stuck it under there and propped it up on the stick and then he stood back and he talked to it. Oh my gosh. He was fixing that car. And I'm telling you, his imagination is off the hook. So, I mean, it was <laughs> cold don't bother him. Holly says she has to Get, get on to him to even put a coat on. She'll tell him, if you don't put a coat on, we're not going outside. So he'll put his coat on. <clears throat> he don't want a coat. She's sitting on the porch, <laughs> bundled up in a blanket, and he's out there playing like it's the middle of summer. <laughs> so we was out there a while, and I said, don't you want to go in and get, get a snack, or or you want to, I said, that's what, I said, you want to blow some bubbles? He said, yeah. So I come in, he come in with me to get them. I said, well, come on, let's go look for them. So I give him the bubbles. So I said, you want to carry them? So he got them, he carried them. And we went through the living room and I was like, oh, you're going to blow some bubbles? And, you know, he was all about the bubbles. And so we went on the porch. We blew bubbles for about this long. And right back down the stairs to that car, he went playing, 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 playing. I kept asking him. 
do you want a snack? You want to go get a snack? Because by then I had come in and got my blanket. I was like, Holly, I'm like, I got to have my blanket. I said, you want a snack? You want to go in and get a snack? <laughs> he says, yeah. So he came up the steps and we went in to get a snack. And he went over to his mommy and lay down and looked at me. He's <laughs> not doing his little face. I said, come on. <laughs> so we went back outside. <laughs> I, I, he changed his mind somewhere between the, the steps and the door and his mommy. He changed his mind about that snack. He wanted to stay outside. So we went back out there. And I asked him, did you want your dump truck? Oh, yeah. He wanted that dump truck. So we come in here. We got the dump truck. I said, go out there and get you some rocks and things. So he pushed it around the front yard a little bit. Then he went over there and started putting it in the car. He loves that. He loves Papa's car. Whenever she takes him to go home, he has to go over and get in that car. She has to get him out of that car to put him in the her car. <laughs> he loves that car because Papa don't lock it, and it's a little Honda, so he can get to it. You know what I mean? It's his size. So he got that dump truck, and he started. I think that dump truck is still in Papa's front floorboard. I think it is. Because that's the last place I remember seeing him put it before they left. Well, he played dump truck, back seat, front seat, round and round. And I told him, I said, do you want to go in and get a snack now? Let's go in and get a snack. It started raining a little bit. I said, it's raining a little bit. Let's go on, let's go on in the house. Well, he come in and he stayed in that time. And he got him a snack. He got him a drink. He got him a fruit cup. Um, <clears throat> then a little bit later, he found him some Cheetos. These were the baked Cheetos. He liked them, um, because I got David the baked variety pack for a change, because he likes potato chips with his sandwiches, you know, chip, chip things. So I thought for a change of pace, I'd give him the baked. But they're good. The baked, um, Lay's variety. They're, they're, they're good. They really are. I don't know points-wise how they differ because I buy them for him. Um, I don't. I think a regular pack like of Lay's hair chips is five, maybe. So I don't know. I don't know how they would differ. I I I'll have to go in there and scan. I think I scanned when I bought them. I think I can't remember. I might not have. Um. But, so he stayed in. He, he he got fine. He stayed in. But Lord have mercy. That is the sweetest little youngin. He is the sweetest little youngin. Now, he has his moments. Holly says sometimes he, he's going through a very, we talked about this last week, a very um, emotional time in his little life where, He'll just have a meltdown over anything. He gets his feelings hurt over little things that you wouldn't think that just hurt his feelings. And he does not like crowds of people looking at him. He, We cannot sing happy birthday to him because it just, he cannot stand being, he likes to be the center of attention because that's a child, but not to a crowd. He don't like people looking at him. He don't like the loud noises. Like if it, you know, she said they were out eating the other day, and he was sitting uh, at a table in a chair, and he was pushing back a little bit, and he, she was like, put your um, feet down, you're going to fall. And she said he must have just pushed it just right, and he started going back. And she said she started hollering Nathan, well, hollering to Jacob, 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 Jacob. And she said, Nathan don't have no reflexes. <laughs> So he went back and she said, when he fell back, he, he fell back seat. And she said, I'll give him credit. He figured out some way when he, when that chair went backwards, instead of him falling back and hitting his head, he was sitting. He said, she said, well, there's a woman behind him. It was like, oh no. And started trying to help. Oh, come on, let's get up. She said, that's when he lost it. Not when he fell, but when the woman started talking to him and everybody was looking at him, that's when he lost it. Like she said, you know, he can't stand the crowds and being looked at. And that's so, um, to me, that's odd for a two-year-old because they're just usually going around about their business. But, you know, when Holly was little, she couldn't stand loud noises. My mama had a, a, a loud voice, you know. 
she, she didn't talk softly. And when she's talking to the babies, she didn't talk softly. She was just herself. You see what I'm saying? And it would scare Holly. It wasn't that she didn't like my mom as a baby. It's just when my mom would say something, that it, it would just get her like that, and, and she would start crying. So I felt bad for my mom, but then little Holly couldn't help it, you know? So... But there's little things we see in Jacob and little actions and things that he does. I'm like, Holly, that's you. <laughs> he had a, a pen. He was holding the paper. He, he put, I got him a little notepad out of my drawer because he had my pen. I said, you want something to write on? He did. So I got him a notepad and well, he pulled out one of the papers and he was holding it up and he was writing. I said, well, honey, if you lay it down, you can write. You can actually write better. No. He had his pen. He had his paper. He, he did this right here and then he handed it to his mommy and mommy said, oh, I love it. And he would stand back there just like that. Oh my gosh. He kept doing that over and over. She said, Go give Momo one. Go write Momo a note. So he'd come over there and he did his little thing and handed it to me. I'm like, oh, it is just beautiful. That is so sweet. And he's back there just going, you know. Who knows in his little mind what he was writing. But he was doing it. I'm telling you, I have two, I call them brilliant kids. They're so smart. They're both so smart. And they're emotionally um, I don't say grown. There's just, they're both, I, I can't explain it, what I'm trying to say. Um, but I don't remember, which I don't remember a lot. That's part of my memory loss that hurts my heart the most is not remembering things about my kids. That hurts my heart the most. And I don't know how to get it back. RJ, he'll bring up something. I'll be like, oh, yeah. Because RJ has a memory like an elephant. He, he remembers, like, practically everything. But I don't remember them being as advanced at that age as Jacob has been at his age. He has always done things ahead of what his age typically is supposed to do or be or understand. I think he's going to be one of these gifted children. He's already gifted. He's just, he blows our mind. He blows Holly's mind. The things he can do and understand. You just talk to him like I'm talking to you. And he understands you. And I say, I've told you before. I'll tell you again. Because Holly never baby talked him. She just talked to him like a little person. Like a little grown up person. So that's what he's known. He's known how to understand and talk. Well, his talking. <laughs> I tell Holly, I'm like, you understood that? She said, yeah. <laughs> well, she's with him, you know, 24 hours a day unless he's asleep. So she knows his little language. I can pick up some things, but not all of them. There's some things now he'll say and she can't really get. And she'll be like, yeah, you know, something like that. Um, but when RJ was little, we used to say he, he spoke Japanese because he went on and on. I mean, on and on. And he knew exactly what he was saying. And we could not understand a word. And then one day, he started talking in English. It was just like, okay, that jibber-jabbering is gone. Okay, I'm, I'm speaking words now. It was the funniest thing. But that's what we did. We said, he's speaking Japanese. Cause we couldn't understand, we couldn't understand nothing. So Jacob's words have not formed clearly yet. There's a couple that he'll throw out there that are very clear. She taught him stop saying yeah because she said sometimes I don't understand when you're trying to say yes or no. They kind of she can't decipher. So she says she taught him say yes, not yeah. And so he started doing that. I always love when he says yeah. 
Now he's a yes. His ass goes, yes. I, I can't. If you'd hear it, you would just melt. <laughs> it's not just a yes. It, it's a, <laughs> it's just so sweet. So, and I don't know if Sebastian's coming down for spring break. I don't know. I don't know when it is. I don't know if he's getting to come down or what. He better, because if he don't, then we don't get him to summer. So that would be all the way from Christmas to all the way to summer. I can't take, I can't take it, y'all. I can't take it. I don't know how, I know some of y'all have grandchildren you've never met in person, and I don't know how you do it. I don't know if it's harder to never have met them in person, or to have met them in person and had them when they were a baby because they got to stay longer because they weren't in school and then you lost it. They say it's better to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all. But I don't know. Is that true? I don't. Neither way is a good situation. If if he was up there and I never met him, I would be I would be heartbroken. It's it's heartbreaking either way. Let's just let's just put it. It is heartbreaking either way. They both have their own um, levels and kinds of heartbreak. So you you really can't say one's better than the other. They're both just pitiful. Because I'm gonna tell you, if you don't have grandbabies, say something about the grandbaby. Holly sent me a thing, and ooh, I could cry about it if I try to think on it. So I'm not gonna try to think on it. I'm just gonna try to think how to tell you what, what it's saying. It was a thing about your parents don't love your your children more than they loved you. They just love seeing, basically seeing you in that child and getting to love you all over again. And I'm like, oh my gosh, ain't that the truth? I don't... Uh, I don't love my grandbabies more than I love my children. I love them all the same. But there's just something, I guess, there's something about when you've gone so many years, your child, you've gone through the childhood, and then they grow up, they leave the nest, and then they're gone, they're adults, and then this new life is breathed into the family. This new, everything's new again. And it's just like, you see your child. I told I told you, I see Holly and Jacob. I see RJ and Sebastian. And it is like just loving them all over again. Let's not get, let's not, let's not get that way. <laughs> Listen, I'm sitting here at my, we're going to change subjects. I'm sitting here at my desk. I've been working on my junk journal, and I have been saving my trash. Let me show you. Okay. This is full of trash. And then, this is full of trash. <laughs> so, I, I filmed some yesterday of decorating some pages with trash. You know, they're not going to be... <laughs> Like your typical junk journal page, they're just how you can put trash in there to try to make something out of it. So y'all are either gonna like it or you're not. <laughs> but I, I did. I'll have to edit it all together and get it up one of these days. I filmed last night um, supper because I'm gonna start that new series like back of the box recipes because I have a cookbook. It's back best recipes on the backs of bottles and jars and cans and boxes and so I went through there and I picked out several recipes that I want to try and I'll give you a hint the one I tried last night was some well, I don't have to give you a hint I'll tell you what it was sweet and smoky oven barbecue chicken from 1966 it won a contest so it sounded good I ain't gonna tell you if it's good or not it was good <laughs> So I'm not sure when that'll be up. I'll, I'll put my junk journal up one day, and I'll put my my best of the back of the box, back of the box. That's what I'm gonna call. It. I think I'm gonna call it back of the box recipes. I'll put that up another day. And I, like I was saying in the video, I don't know how often I'll do them. Just whenever I put the 
thing on the menu, then I'll I'll film it for that week. But yeah, I've just got a few little things in line to start filming and bringing you. And ain't none of them weight loss related. Pretty much the only weight loss related thing we do is this weigh-in. And then Weight Watchers is brought up because I give you points for my menu plan and grocery haul. Other than that, it, it's not about Weight Watchers. Because I'm here to tell you, my life don't revolve around Weight Watchers. And it don't revolve around points. If I was tracking like I should be, it would revolve around points. So, I don't know which one's good. Which one is the best? That you... Look, look, look. There's my cup. That I got at the um, Nazareth the other day. I showed it on my haul. Grits. Girls raised in the South. Call me Grits. Yes, when I saw that, I'm like, I got to have it. Because I have heard that saying before. And when I seen the cup, I'm like, Ooh, I got to have you. But... Which is better, being so involved in your points that you track everything and you stay on plan, or not revolving so much around points that it drives you insane? I don't know. Because if you don't watch your points, then you're subject to go off plan. Because I've been there. I've been there. I ain't, I ain't tracked my points regular since I got back on Weight Watchers, and that is the honest to goodness truth. I have not. I have not got myself 100% back on plan. But this week, this was one of my better weeks. And I just knew I had a loss. I didn't weigh all week. Because y'all know I used to be a daily wear. And then I got down to every couple of days or whatever. And then here lately, I'll go and, and won't weigh until weigh day, which is Thursday. And I knew I had a loss. I knew I had a loss. I could feel it. And then I got on there and I'm like, are you joking me? So, that's why I come to the realization, I know it's that lyric. I know it is. But, I'm, I've got to get back to, like, when I do recipes, getting the points for it, like weighing, measuring, whatever. Like, well, like last night, the recipe, the, the chicken was chicken parts with skin on it. So if you eat the part with the skin, you have to count it. I already said, if I wasn't eating the skin, I wouldn't count the chicken. I think it's ridiculous to count chicken, dark meat, or white meat. It's chicken. It's protein. There ain't, the dark meat's more moist, but there ain't no, to me, much a difference in what little bit of moisture is from fat from a chicken breast. I, I just don't, if I'm not eating the skin, honey, I ain't counting that chicken. I ain't doing it. There's this much meat on a chicken leg. Are you kidding me? Hold on. And a thigh, they ain't much more than a chicken leg. So if I don't eat the skin, forget it. Well, last night, I ate a thigh and a leg, and I eat the skin. I didn't track because I wasn't tracking. But the recipe, when you figured out the sauce, come out to 13 points of serving. But if I was tracking, I wouldn't track nowhere near that because it was all in the bottom of the pan and just a bare coating on the chicken. So I wouldn't even know how to count that. I would I would probably count it to zero because there was no more of it on the chicken than that. And that's another thing. Marinades? I ain't counting no marinade. Are you serious? I'm not drinking it. It's just flavoring the chicken, which is typically what you marinate. Nate, I ain't counting that. Do y'all have things y'all don't count? We've talked about this before. And no, I don't attribute that to weight gain. A squirt of ketchup for some french fries. That ain't causing me to gain no weight. A little bit of oil in the pan to saute something. That ain't causing me no weight. I don't count those little things. I'm not going to. Because, that's what we were saying on the menu plan. You have to make this diet, because it's a diet. Argue with me. Don't. No, ar don't argue with me. <laughs> when it changes the way that I used to eat, and I want to eat, when it changes that so drastically, 
That's a dot. But what you have to do is you have to learn how to make the dot your lifestyle. And to have a lifestyle that you can live the rest of your life. And I'm here to tell you, good as I'm sitting here in front of you, I'm not going out the rest of my life weighing or measuring ketchup. I ain't doing it. The cream I put in my coffee, I ain't doing it. I'm not doing it. If I want to go to a restaurant and have some coffee and put some packs of creamer in it, I'm not going to look up them creamers and count them and weigh them and none of that. I'm not going to do it at home every time I make me a cup of coffee. I don't care if it does slow me down. That's a lifestyle choice that I choose. I've said it a million times. Well, not quite a million. We have to have a life. Even though we're trying to lose weight, we still have to have a life. You have to have some quality of life that, that you can live with. We can't go out. And face it, we're getting older. We, To me, I can't go out weighing and measuring ketchup, weighing and measuring coffee creamer, weighing and measuring a little bit of olive oil in the pan. None of that. I, that is a lifestyle I have chosen for myself while I'm on this weight loss journey. I'm not going to be strict on those things when I'm 80. So I'm not going to do it now. Because you still, I'm telling you, we got to lose weight, but we got to have a life we can enjoy. Now, that don't mean, okay, ice cream every day is my lifestyle, because you, that's really going to hurt you. Unless it's like a little small scoop. You see what I'm saying? But if that is your thing, that your is your lifestyle, because you love ice cream so much, then... Just don't eat a, a big golly whopping bowl of it because that really ain't going to help you lose weight. Maybe one little scoop. That's up to you. But there are little things we can do to give us the lifestyle that we like while still losing weight. Just not big things like <laughs> big strawberry. That's what <laughs> Jacob will say. Big strawberry. <laughs> anyway so or having a piece of cake every day stuff like that that is really that's really not going to help us that's um to me that's different those are treats just little things like let's see um oh okay here's one We've talked about this before, too. The nutritionist at Duke told me if the only way, because she wanted half my plate in vegetables, and boy, I tried it, and I couldn't do it. I tried it. I gave it. I gave it to old college try, and I could not do it. So I, I gave up. I quit. Um, She said, if the only way you're going to eat broccoli is with cheese on it, put that cheese on it, because I want you to eat the broccoli. So, if you eat broccoli, and you put cheese on it, and you don't count that cheese, well, that, that to me, is one of those lifestyle things. You're eating your broccoli, you're getting your broccoli in, and you have to have cheese on it to, to choke it down, <laughs> which that sounds terrible, that broccoli is that bad, but you know what? Hold on. There are some people that would hurl at the thought of a piece of broccoli coming towards them. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you know broccoli is good for you and you want to eat it, but you have to have cheese on it and you're not going to count that cheese, to me, that's the lifestyle things that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a lifestyle that lets you eat tater chips and cakes and cookies all day long. Because you're never going to lose weight like that. If you are, tell me how you're doing it. Because <laughs> I could get with that little program. <laughs> could you imagine... Could you imagine if we could sit around all day like some people with the metabolism of uh, I don't know who cakes and cookies and ice cream and tater chips and Doritos and Cheetos <laughs> all those all those things that call us when we want a snack I, th think of anything that it is that calls you you get a craving for, a hankering for, a need for. 
if we could sit around and eat all that stuff all day long and lose weight, we might not be very healthy, but if we could lose weight, <laughs> golly, could you imagine? Oh, man. <laughs> Our teeth might rot out. <laughs> from all the sugar. Blood pressure go up from all the salt. You know, I don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me. I did tell you I got to come off my blood pressure medicine, right? So losing the weight, even down to where I am now, where some people start, where I have got to, some people start here. Some people start lower. So losing the weight I did lose, I got to come off my blood pressure medicine. So, hey, that's a bonus. If you could eat that way and not have high blood pressure, I don't know. Because I don't eat that way now. It's not tater chips every day where I have <clears throat> that. I do eat salt. I put salt on my food. I got to have salt on my food. Not salty, so that's all you taste is salt. But salt brings out the flavor. Y'all can't deny that. David, he can eat pretty much anything without salt in it. He'll salt a baked tater. Other things I'll cook, I say, now it needs salt. Because I always say that because it always does. Because there's so many things I cook that I don't put salt in. Because he, he likes plain old food. He He's just, now he likes flavorful food. But in his mind, he this is how strong-willed he is. His job depends on no high blood pressure and no diabetes. Because <clears throat> they will ground you. He says, my job depends on it. So he watches his salt and he watches his sugar. Now, he likes sugar. He used to didn't. I guess I probably changed him because I do. And if I had it, he would eat it. And then he got to work. You know, he likes sugar. I said, well, <laughs> we'll get us an ice cream something every now and then, you know, to have in the fridge. Like right, right now, we got some brown mules. They have been in that refrigerator, that, that freezer for Gosh, I don't know how long. Some weeks I don't even have one. And then some weeks I have one. <clears throat> but every now and then, he likes an ice cream sandwich, a brown mule. He said, this week, he said, let's get some fudgicles. We say fudgicles. So that's why I opted for the um, sugar-free. So then we wouldn't have sugar. <clears throat> that would be one place to not have the sugar. And he said, oh, that was cool with him. But, he is so aware of this is my job that he has that willpower. But while I was talking about the sugar, I'll get little snacks for him because he'll get up. He, he's a midnight snacker. He'll wake up in the middle of the night, which is in the daytime. But that's his middle of the night <clears throat> and want a snack. So I have little things like there for a long time. He, he liked mixed nuts and I would bag them up in little quarter cups baggies and so he he was into the mixed nuts for a while and he when i'd hear him get up go to the bathroom and i didn't hear the bedroom door shut you know right after that i know he's in there hunting him a snack well <clears throat> he he'll put stuff down in the floor beside the bed and, well i finally put him a little basket down there to put his snacks in he'll get like the little knee cots got little four cookies in it well i was at ollie's the other week and they had those Bo bob's best cookies I used to get them for him at the bread store way back in the day. And he would take them to work and he would snack on them. He loved those cookies. Well, they had two different ones. They had like the candy pieces, which is like an M&M, &M, you know. And the whatever they called them, which is like an Oreo. But the cookies are like this big. They're just little small things. So I put them in there on the table over there on his side of the room. <clears throat> I went in there to... I had to fix his covers all the time because he, he must flounder around like a whale in the ocean <clears throat> because his corner of the sheet comes up all the time. So I went over there to fix that sheet and there was him two boxes of cookies sitting in the floor. <laughs> so we was talking about it the other day. I said, well, he said, I got He said, I got to watch it. <clears throat> I said, well, I can help you. I said, I can go in there right now and throw them cookies away. I can help you. I will just throw them away. <laughs> he goes, well, I don't know if I'm ready to give that up quite yet. 
Like, hey, that's up to you. <laughs> he likes his little treat in the middle of the night, and he's got to where he likes a little sweet treat. Well, there's a lot worse things he can do. He he was there for a while. He was on a honey bun kick every night at work. He would get him a drink to go with his supper and get him a honey bun out of the snack machine. You know, well, they don't really have a snack machine. They have snacks set up, and it's on the honor system that you pay for it. And then they have drink machines. And Well, he finally got out of that. Every now and then, he'll get him one because he's just like, got to have me a honey bun. He likes him, what they call creamy curls. They're like a, I guess you could say they're like a Boston cream pie honey bun. Creamy curl, creamy curl. Yeah, he likes them. <clears throat> so I went to the bread store the other week. They had creamy curls. They're Miss Freshly's. Miserous. Miserous Freshly's. And so I got it, brought him home. I said, I got you something. So I guess I enabled him. I said, got you a creamy curl. <laughs> but he can get something. Like if, if I get a treat, I'll get him a treat of the same thing. Like, what did I see? It was a Kit Kat. I, I'm trying to think where I've seen it. It was a Kit Kat and a Reese's Cup. So I got me a Kit Kat and I got him a Reese's Cup and him the same thing. Well, I had mine eat up for long. I didn't sit there and eat them all in one day. Honestly, I didn't. I, I eat them up maybe in a week's time. <clears throat> he has sat over there forever. I'm like, honey, how do you have that stuff sitting there and not inhale it? He has some willpower. I'm going to tell you what. It, I wish I had it. <clears throat> my throat is getting on my nerves. We will quit talking. We're going to quit talking because I know y'all tired of me saying, hold on. <laughs> I don't know where that's coming from today. So anyway. Okay, well, we'll just quit. How about that? We'll, we'll just... just <laughs> so... Five point whatever pounds. Woo. <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna get me a loss next week. Cause I'm gonna I'm gonna claim that that is an initial weight gain and I'm gonna be able to fight it from here on out. There you go. Okay, well, I hope you have a good day. Do not forget to come back at 1 o'clock for the collab with me and Denise. I think you'll enjoy it. We both enjoy doing it. So that'll do it for me today. I'll see. What's this? It's Thursday. We'll go live tomorrow at 1. Good little wheel and creek don't rise. And I'll edit something for you to watch tomorrow if you don't come to live. I'll edit something for you. I know some of you watch the replay on live. That's cool. <clears throat> so I'll work on something today to get up for you tomorrow. How about that? Okay, see you then. So I'm back because I forgot I had Happy Mail I was going to put on here. And so I forgot to tell you. This is from Judy Beecham. And it was a surprise. I got a package yesterday. I'm like, oh, I got a surprise. I hadn't had Happy Mail in a long time. So I was excited. So I wanted to share with you what she sent me. And I don't typically read the notes that y'all send because I think it's private. It's private from you to me. So I don't read them. But I'm going to read you this one because it's just cool. It's just cool. Okay, so let me turn you around. Here's the little card. These are like quills. They're pretty. So let me... Well, I can't get it open. It says... Kim, while watching Joan discussing clutter, I turned in my chair and proceeded to clear two drawers. Instead of donating locally, I thought of you. Isn't that sweet? I just thought that is so cool. That that was she she was inspired by Joan and then thought enough of me to send me these cookbooks instead of donating them. And they're some old cookbooks. And y'all know how I love old cookbooks and church cookbooks. Okay, so this one is Recipes from Grandma's Gang, volume whatever that is for. But look, this is from, where, well, must be inside. Yeah. Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Let me move my finger. 
Isn't that cool? So it's got the, the family, and it's just full of, like, old family pictures and recipes. Somebody must have made that one because there's a spill on it. So there's that one. Oh, oh, there's another one under there. I didn't see that. Volume 3. Look, there's Grandma. Ain't that sweet? And then there's this one. Zion Centennial Recipes. 1901 to 2001. Like that. And then Holiday Cheers 4 Recipe Book. I guess it's got... um. Pizza by the Yard. That sounds good. Celebrity recipes. My fingers are so dry I can't get a hold of stuff. Okay, who was that? Donna Jordan, news anchor. Dayton. This must be an Ohio cookbook. Yeah, I guess so. And then there's this one. River Road Recipes. Number two. And I'm not sure what River Road is. Um... I don't know, but it is, does it have Baton Rouge? Oh, sponsored by the Junior League. I guess it's the, yeah, oh, there we go, the Baton Rouge Junior League. And I can't find the recipe, I mean the, um, oh, there it is, 1976. Uh-huh, y'all know I'm going to love that. And then the first congregational church, Fargo, North Dakota. So, let's see. Y'all know I love knowing the year. Um, copyright, but there's no year on it. But look at the, how it's, the old timey, um, the way it's made with the ads and how it's typed in that font. You know that's old. And then here is the Pillsbury cookbook. And it was, I found it, it says this is a new edition. The first copyright was 1914. But I guess this was, I don't know if it's got like a reprint date. It doesn't. But it says new edition. So I'm guessing this is not the actual 1914 book. I mean, I don't think it is, but it's that's when the recipes started. So these are some old recipes. We might have to work some out of this. And then this one, loaves and fishes. I don't know. You see, it's a tied with little leather straps, and I don't think it even says because I looked in here. I don't think it says it's just dedicated to the pastors. And it's just a little book like that. A little Bible verse on lots of the pages. But I don't know who or what, where it came from. But you can tell it's old. This says the Community Digest. American Legion. Stanton, North Dakota. Um, no date. Nope. But you can tell, you can just tell when they're old just by looking at the, the font and the way it's printed and the way it's decorated and everything. And this one, Potpourri of the Prairie, Tastes and Tales from the Cheyenne River Valley. That is Valley City, North Dakota. And somebody, might be Judy, has little pages um, picked out. We the 1983 Valley City Hockey Boosters Club. So that's who that's who did this recipe book. So this is a 1983 book. Okay. And then this one. Laurel's Kitchen, a handbook of vegetarian cookery and nutrition. You can tell this one is old. Let's see if it's got a kind of hard for me to hold my phone up high enough to see the whole picture here. Um, first published 1976, fifth printing 78. So this is a 1978 cookbook. How cool is that? Listen, might find a way for me and David to eat a vegetable. 
Then there is this. I was waiting to open it up on camera so I wouldn't have everything just all over the um, thing here. But she sent some things, she said, for my junk journal. This is the best way I know to do it. So there are little recipes. Look, you know I love this kind of stuff. Oh, look, some little Halloween, little Halloween ties. I'll glue them. And some stickers. Oh, yes. Oh, look, little things I can use to glue down or make little tags out of them. Let's see. Oh, this is um a little, I don't want to undo that. Memories, I guess where you can take these little pieces they have in here, ephemera, and decorate your own little book. So that's cool. That shows what all comes in it. Oh, that's, I've never seen one of those. A little kit. Oh, there's another one. Memories. Those are cool. I bet these fell out of one of those. I'll have to see which ones. Yeah, I can tell some of these fell out of those two um, things. And then there's a... Um, You know I'll put this in, well, you know I'll put this in my journal. That trash journal I'm doing, you know that's going in there, Judy. And then little um, foam flowers and some stickers. So how cool is that? So I wanted to share it with you. And I thank you so much, Judy, for thinking about me. That was just very, very sweet. Okay, now I will end my video.